Hi everybody! Happy Tutorial Tuesday! So this one, as I had lots of people ask me to do, is going to be about brushes. Um, I wanted to tell you a lot about brushes, but that would take a long time because there's a lot of stuff that you can know about brushes. So I'm just going to go over a few basic things, um, my basic brushes that I like to have on hand. Um, there's a lot of different ones that you might find work better for you, and if I don't cover it and it works for you, then roll with it. I mean, whatever. Your face is your canvas. You have to use the brush that gives you the look that you want. Um, so first thing that I want to go over, I've got my notes right here. I'm trying to follow along so I don't get lost. So, yeah. Um, the first thing I want to cover is not about certain brush, but things about brushes in general. There's going to be two kinds of brushes. Well, kind of three. Um, you're going to have your synthetic fiber brushes and then you're going to have ones that are real hair. Synthetic fibers are more slippery so you might end up having to go back and get more product more and more so you can actually get the look you want because a lot of it might fall off of the brush before it gets to your face. Um, they are more hygienic because they're not a real hair that has pores to soak up any kind of bacteria or makeup or anything like that. So some people like those better. I have both. Um, there's also real hair brushes like this one is real hair. And I prefer real hair. Um, like my foundation brush is synthetic because that kind of freaks me out and it's on my face and gets oil in it and stuff and I'd just rather have it be synthetic because I feel like it's cleaner. Whatever you like. Whatever works for you. So there's that. Synthetic versus real. There's also duo fiber. A lot of stippling brushes that are for foundation. Um, a different way of putting your foundation on. Those, a lot of them are goat hair plus synthetic. Um, they're kind of shaped like this. This is a blush brush, but um, they're kind of shaped like this one, except a lot of times they have the goat hair up to here, which is black usually, and then they'll have synthetic hair sticking up on top, which is more fine. The reason for that is the goat hair is very good at packing on, or packing in the makeup into the brush, and then the synthetic is more fine, and the bristles are tapered, like each little hair is tapered, so it gives you more of the airbrushed look. So you get all the product on there, but it still looks airbrushed and not streaky. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that's it. So, oh, density. How did I forget that? Density. Um, basically, the general rule is the more dense the brush, the brighter, more vivid, more deep the color is going to be. The reason for that is, say, like this brush. This one is very light. It's not very densely packed with fibers. It's going to be better for diffusing color. Can you see I was playing with this eye and didn't finish and do this eye? It's a little lighter. Um, if you want to have a really dark color or really bright color, you're going to want to use something that's more dense because it's going to pick up more of the pigment of the color that you're using and it's going to pack it onto your eye or wherever you're putting it, really. It's going to pack it on a lot better. Whereas this one isn't going to pick up as much, and what it does pick up is going to fall off easier because it's not as dense. Um, that's also kind of related to synthetic versus real. If it's synthetic, the hairs are going to be, fibers are going to be more slippery, so stuff's not going to stay on either. So if you really don't want to make a difference, and you really just kind of want to have a little bit of color, get one of these that's not densely packed at all, and that's synthetic, because then everything's just going to fall off the brush. So um, that's sarcasm. Don't do that. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to go through the brushes that I normally use that are my favorite brushes, and yeah. Um, one thing is I don't like to pay attention to labels of brushes. If you find brushes that you like and they work for the look that you are trying to achieve, stick with those brushes. If you have an eyeshadow brush that, you know, you got it and it was labeled an eyeshadow brush and it works for contouring, use it for that. It doesn't matter. Um, don't get hung up on those things. So the first brush that I always use, I do my primer with my hands. I wash my hands right before I put my primer on so they're as oil-free as I can get them. Because um, I don't, I have oily skin. I don't want to have extra oil on my face if I don't have to. So I wash my hands, put my primer on, let it sit for a few minutes, and then I start with my foundation brush. This guy is a cheapy. It's not even like a super nice brush or anything. I got it in clearance and it's been working for me really well. This is synthetic. It kind of looks like a duo fiber, but it's not. Um... It has, the hairs down here are more thick, like each hair is thicker down at the base, and then up here where it's lighter, they're very fine, and each individual hair, I can't show you on this lovely webcam, but um, each individual hair is actually tapered, so it's very smooth, 
Now the reason I like that is it packs the foundation in. I use a liquid foundation. Um, it packs, this is good for liquid or cream. It packs the foundation in so you get it on your skin very well but then this helps it be more airbrushed and not streaky. So it packs it on but then as you glide each one of these kind of gets it all blended together better than if you had just like a flat brush. Like you know when you're painting with a paintbrush and you can see the paint strokes having this and with each each fiber being tapered helps diffuse that. Another thing that I used, I actually used this guy today. Um, this is a blending sponge. Now there's the actual Beauty Blender, which is like company, you can go buy it, that's what it's called, the Beauty Blender. They're phenomenal. Um, Unique has the blending buds. It's a set of two, you get a big one and a little one. Um, this is a Real Techniques one, I got it at Walmart. And I like it, it's pretty good. Um, it has a flat end, which is what I like. And yeah, it's got the pointy end, so this is good for little details. Um, the biggest thing is make sure that this is wet when you use it. Not soaking wet, put it under water, get it all, you know, wet, and then squeeze it out really hard. I actually put it inside a hand towel and then squeeze it because I feel like it sucks up even more water because you want it to be damp but not wet. The reason for that is if there's water inside, it's not going to suck in the makeup that you put on top. So it's not going to waste all of your foundation. So you put some foundation on your hand or dab it on your face and then you pick it up or just go right to your face and what you want to do is this is the flat end when I'm using the flat end this is what I do I just stipple it on like this and go all over flip it to the pointy end to do my nose my eyes all that stuff um, if you don't have one that has a flat end or if you know you can't find one like that then you can use the round end and what you want to do is just roll it that's kind of like stippling it's just you know kind of covers a bigger area. Um, what you don't want to do is twist or roll it and then pull before you're finished rolling. You want to roll it onto your face and off of your face, kind of like that. Don't twist it, don't drag it, because that's just going to mess everything up and you'll be streaky, you'll take your primer off too probably, it's just, yeah, don't do that. But that's a really good guy, I like this. I definitely, it's probably the most foolproof way to do foundation and not be all streaky. So let's see, I do that and then that. Okay, the next part would be my concealer. I'm trying to think on the fly of like my makeup routine without actually doing my makeup. It's like muscle memory now, so now I have to figure out like I'm not actually doing it. <laughs> so I have these two that I use for concealer. Sometimes I use the end of my beauty blender too if I just have like a little bit. But normally, because I do a lot of concealer, I use these two. This is a little flat concealer brush. It's tapered, as you can hopefully see. It's thicker at the bottom than at the top. Um, it's a natural fiber. And I really like it because I can pick up a good amount of concealer on the brush. And then I usually use it right up in here. And then I go around here usually. Now this guy, this is for cream or liquid concealer. By the way, I keep forgetting to say that. Sorry. Um, this guy I use for if I'm doing a powder concealer or if I've already done the liquid and cream and blended it out and I want to set it with a powder, um, I like it for that. The reason I like it for that is it's more fluffy, it's domed on the top, and it's just, it picks up powder a lot better. It's not really a, a cream or liquid concealer kind of brush. Um, the general rule is fluffy brush powder, and I mean you can use it for whatever, but generally fluffy brushes for powder, and these kinds of brushes, the flat ones, tapered ones, are better for liquid and cream. So, that being said about this guy for concealing, I like to use this one for contouring as well. Um, because it's little, but it's rounded, so it still isn't such a harsh line. Um, I like to use this one if I'm going to do contouring up in here and stuff, and also good in here. Or if I want to do a little bit of highlighting, it's all right for there. Not the best choice, but it still works in a pinch. Um, for my main contouring, what I use pretty much every time I do any contouring, I usually do bronzer, by the way. I like to stick with powders once I get my liquid foundation on. It just helps me keep the oiliness down. I don't want to do liquids and liquids and creams and stuff because creams have lots of oil and liquids tend to also. Um, I like to use this. It's just a fluffy powder brush and very fluffy. It's not super dense because it's better for diffusing and giving you a soft look. If it was really dense, it would be better at applying color in more of a precise area. So I like this one. What I do, say this is my bronzer. I swirl it around my bronzer, and then, this is my trick, I 
pinch it. And then once I pinch it, I go up in my cheeks, or the hollows in my cheeks. And then on this side, I do my nose. And this doesn't have to be pre precise, because you're going to blend it up. So I do cheeks, my nose, and then I go up around here. I flip it around to do my face up here, up around there. And then I let go of the pinch, you know, get a little bit more bronzer. And then I just, oops, my hair's all messed up. And I do it all around here and just blend on what I've already put on. This one, I usually don't do it so much on my cheeks because I don't want to end up with bronzer right here. But um, sometimes I will if it's a little harsh and I do all up there. So that's what I do for bronzer. Um, and then I do blush. I like to do my blush pretty precisely in, you know, the same, like, area. I don't do crazy blush because I like to do lots of bronzer and have lots of contouring because I have a very round face. So this is what I use. It is a short little blush brush. Uh, very dense, very densely packed. And it's really good for packing the blush into there and keeping it right where you want it. I only do blush right here. I do it, I tap just a little bit and then sweep it out. I don't like to do, like, crazy blush everywhere because I don't need very pink cheeks. Because I've already got the bronzer and I just don't want to look like layered crazy makeup all over the place. So that's what I do for my blush. Now I want to go to my eye brushes. Not done with my face, but... There's one more, but I do that last, so I'll do that last. Um, my eye brushes. There's a few. My most basic brush that if I couldn't have any other eyeshadow brush, I would choose this one, would be, this is Unique's Deluxe Brush. Um, it's basically just a fluffy shader brush. Um, it's pretty dense. These are natural fibers. They're my favorite natural hair. Um, it really carries the product, whatever you're putting on the pigments or shadow carries it very well. Um, you can get it packed in there. Now what I usually do is I get it up, I'll show you. Hold on a second, I'm gonna do my brow bones. Okay, so I pack it on in there like that, and then you see how much is on there? Yeah, and it's not gonna come off a lot. So then you can just go right up here. Now I don't like to drag, I like to just tap it on. And I'll show you in a second, this will all come for full circle in a second like to tap it on there. That's what it's best for for me. Um, pretty dense shadow application. Now, that being said, the, br the bristles, when I say that they're very dense, that means there's a lot packed in there. Like, if I took like my ponytail and had it really, really tightly wound, there's going to be a lot more in there than if I just kind of have it in a loose hair tie or whatever. I mean, I guess that's kind of a good way to describe it. So anyways, I did that. Now I really like to have my pencil brush. Now this is Unique's crease brush. A lot of people call it a crease brush, but a lot of other people call it a pencil brush. Um, I call it a pencil brush that I use in my crease because it's like um, it, it gives the look of doing an, like a pencil, like a liner pencil, but then already having it smudged out. It's very, very dense. These are natural fibers. They're very stiff, um, so they're pretty, you know, there's a lot in there, and they're very stiff, they're not like super bendy, um, and this was white, but I use black so much that it's kind of stained now, but, um, yeah, I just really like it, it's really good for that, let me just show you how I use it, so, this is good for doing like a cut crease, or if you want to have a darker crease, um, not if you're going to do like an everyday kind of shadow, like a light look, it's, this is, this really packs on the color, so if you don't want to have a lot of color, don't use this. Or, you know, figure it out. <laughs> That's what my recommendation. So anyways, this is my brow palette that I use. It's just a Salon Perfect one. I got it right here, I think. I don't know. So I always use this guy. Well, not always, but a lot of times I use this one. It's actually a brow color, but I like it on my eyes. So I'm packing it in. Tap it off so there's any excess. Just in case I have fallout, I don't want to have it. And I go up in my crease like this. And it just helps you build that. Do you see the difference? I think, I hope you can see the difference. But, yeah. So I go like that. And now, I've got my brow bone densely packed on with the um, fluffy shader. And I used my pencil brush to get a very defined crease. Which, yeah, that could look good for some looks. I do that a lot um, for kind of a cut crease look. But if I want it to be more, kind of more, I don't know, light. Not as 
like, wow, there's black and wow, there's white, then I will use this. Um, I don't really know what everyone else calls this. I call this my fluffy blending brush. Um, you can also call it a fluffy crease brush. Um, this is Mary Kay one. They call it the eye crease. So here's to show you how brushes differ. This is Unique's crease brush. This is Mary Kay's crease brush. This one is very, very dense, very stiff. This one is not dense, and they're really bendy. Like, they're they're not stiff. Like, this almost feels like, like boar hair. It's very stiff. So, both called the same thing. Very different. That's what I'm saying. Don't listen to the labels. This one I used. So, I did my pencil brush here to do it pretty dark. I did my um, fluffy shader here to, be, to make it very, very densely packed. So, then I'm going to use this one. This is my fluffy crease brush, which is what I call it. And then I'm going to go where the two meet and just blend it out like that. And you'll see that it's diffused it a little bit. So it's not so much of a line. So that's what I use this one for. Now, if you're going to do like an everyday kind of look and you don't want it to be all um, like as dark as this or anything, I would say use this kind of brush. A fluffy shader. Got <laughs> the powder coming off. That's how much it packs in there. Um, I would say use this to do all over. Use a lighter color up here. And then just take this in like a darker brown or whatever kind of, if you just want to define the crease, make your eyes have more dimension. Just take this one. Don't use the pencil brush. Just take this one and lightly go, just follow the natural shape of your crease. This one's really good for diffusing color or diffusing lines between two colors, things like that. Um, these are extras. This one here. I really like this guy. This is Unique's Cream Shadow Brush. Um, you can even use it as a concealer brush. I've done that before when I can't find my little itty bitty concealer brush. This is very, very, very densely packed. Like, very. <laughs> it's just really thick. It's a really good one though. Um, it's good for cream shadow because you can pack it right in there and then put it on. It's almost like a mini foundation brush but for your eyes. Um, it gets a very thick coverage. It's not something that is going to be good for kind of doing a diffused look that this is going to give you. It's going to hold a lot more color. It's going to give you a bigger kind of payout, color payout. So that one, this is also good for glitter. I don't know if you're going to put glitter on, but I like to do glitter and shimmer a lot because it's kind of like my thing. And this is really good. You can just kind of dip it on, on the glitter or shimmer and then just kind of pat it on top. And it'll put it right there exactly where you want it to be and leave it. Um, oh, yes, yes. Okay, this guy is the duo brush. If you can only have one brush, and if you could only bring one, like I bring this when I go traveling and don't bring the rest of my brushes, my rest of my eye brushes, because this one is a liner shader duo. And can you see that? Is it like gonna, it's probably not gonna focus? Okay, anyways, this is like the fluffy shader brush. But it's little brother. It's smaller. But it is just as densely packed and it's very, very versatile. I use it for a lot of stuff. You can do a one eye look. That'd be a good idea. Do you want me to do a tutorial and show you how to do your whole eye look with just this one brush? Let me know because that would be really cool. I could do that next Tuesday. Anyways, so I use this. Um, you would do like just regular shadow application. It's really good for getting up in here if you want. And this guy the liner, the angled liner brush is very, very thick. It's also really good for like a gel liner or you could even take your liner pencil if you don't want to do, if you don't want to deal with the pencil and have it be thicker or anything and just rub it on the top of it. Um, it's really good. It's really good for doing like a line like this and then you can kind of go up like that just a tiny bit and it makes it a little smudgy. Um, yeah, it's also good on here, and you can even use it as, like, lip liner, and, yeah, it's very, very useful. So, that's almost it. My last one, oh, this one also, I forgot this, a spoolie. Spoolies are very useful for me. Um, I like to use it to comb up my brows before I fill them in so that I can have more skin exposed so I can cover it more so I don't have, like, like if my eyebrow gets like moved or something, I don't have like a bald looking spot or anything. It's also good for separating lashes, you know, if you've got lots of mascara on or something. 
my last and final brush that I use, it's always my last step, is my powder brush. My big, fluffy, it is a big brush, and I really like, I mean, it's not huge, but it's it's a big brush, very, very densely packed. There's a lot, a lot of fibers in here, a lot of hairs. This is a natural hair one. Um, I use it for my translucent powder, and I use that to set it. So what I do is I take my big, I've got like a big pile of translucent powder, I put it in, get it all over, and then I... Put the powder right here where I get most oily and let it sit for a second and then I just kind of, I call it fluff, but I buff it all over and just get it really worked into all of my makeup so that I can be nice and looking all airbrushed and flawless even when I'm stressed out and hot and whatever, you know. Keeps you looking good all day and helps your makeup stay in place. So, um, I think that's it. Uh, let me know what you think, what you'd like to see, what you don't want to see. Um, that would be really cool to do a tutorial with this one and show you a look with just this, this one duo brush. So let me know if you'd like to see that. Um, anything else, let me know. You can reach me. You can find me on Instagram as underscore the makeup chick. You can find me on here and comment. You can find me on Facebook as the makeup chick. And yeah. So thanks for watching and let me know what you think.